Hello, welcome to The Market Carver. I'm Adam Harder, Chief Investment Officer of Financial Enhancement Group. Thank you for joining us again and giving us a little bit of your time here where everything is jam-packed as we look at a December 23rd, Christmas Eve Eve. So Merry Christmas to you all. Uh, it's a really busy time, so again, thank you. We're going to talk about gold in the portfolios and why we've given it a little bit of an extra leash. It's not an asset that struggled, uh, but it hasn't necessarily done well in an environment when you think uh, it otherwise should have. So we're going to get point to one of the main reasons why. Uh, last week, we talked at length about the FOMC pivot, so I'll give you an update there, and then an outlook towards Fed rate hike cycles, which by all measures we are heading towards, and then an update at the S&P 500 daily trend, something that we look at each and every Monday in our investment allocation meeting. Uh, so starting now with golds, uh, and gold during prior 60-40 uh, portfolios. So this is a very long-term chart, and you're looking at draw down. So the red line on this chart uh, is the 60-40 portfolio of global stocks and bonds. So 60% in equities, 40% in fixed income, and you can see there are various periods of significant drawdown. Of course, notably in the 1930s uh, during the Great Depression, the 1970s very harsh, and then a couple of twin. Uh, bear markets in the 2000s. Uh, during each of those, one thing is common, that is the blue line, uh, which is gold returns uh, during those uh, periods of time. And what you find is that gold uh, acted as a significant hedge. So that is just one of the reasons why we think gold belongs in the portfolio. Not by any means does that mean that we think we're heading towards one of these major 60-40 drawdowns. However, we are at a period where we're at an increased likelihood that stocks and bonds are more highly correlated. Uh, that's just simply the way it has been when inflation is higher than the 2 to 3% range. One we're clearly in right now, all the questions are how long we stay there, but we're very clearly there. And in those environments, again, bonds and stocks tend to be more highly correlated. So you lose some of the diversification benefits. Therefore, gold has a more important role in the portfolio. So it doesn't have a, a permanent spot or uh, one that we will hold at all costs, uh, but as long as it holds on to reasonable trends, uh, it has a place and a role in most diversified portfolios. So the FOMC, uh, as we talked about last week, there was a real chance that they would swing to an incredibly hawkish pivot. And for the most part, that is indeed what we saw here. So this is uh, a table of where the FOMC, the Federal Reserve, predicted uh, or where they believed interest rates would be uh, for the end of 2022 at various meetings. You go all the way back into 2019, and then, of course, all the way through 2020, uh, they set the rates down to the, the floor level of, of zero, where they thought they would be at the end of 22. Of course, if you think back to the middle of, of 2020, uh, we just kind of imagined it was hard to imagine any sort of positive environment that would lift us out of a zero uh, rate hike scenario. But here we are. And by last meeting, of course, they began to signal that the coming off of that uh, zero rate policy, you could see the expectation, the meeting expectation by the Federal Reserve out of a quarter of a point. Uh, but here they go on a significant shift uh, going up towards in between three quarters and one percent is the middle of the road uh, FOMC expectation. So very clearly trying to prepare themselves and, and markets for a, an interest rate hike cycle. And that presents some challenges for the micro market. They're not always bad. But on this chart is some uh, from Ned Davis Research, a look uh, back through history at some various uh, market cycles. The green one here, that's where we want to start. Those are uh, market cycles that don't come with a Fed hike, uh, hiking cycle. And what you see is a generally positive environment uh, all the way throughout the month. So that green, very, very positive. The other three are three different types of Fed rate hikes. In each of those, of course, you have lower paths of the S&P 500. Uh, the worst is the gold, where you go through a rapid rate hike cycle. These are those where the Fed is behind the curve and they have to adjust interest rates really rapidly. Those are the ones that are most difficult uh, for them to overcome. And you can see the first dashed line. So that is marks the point of the first rate hike. And so at that point in time, 
all the way up until that first hike, markets have done okay. But from there, uh, you've barely saw any increase at all uh, during those harshest of market cycles. Of course, they aren't all down. Uh, both of the other ones are, are less aggressive, but still less than the average. So uh, on average, the Fed rate hike cycle is one of those things that's going to be stacked against the market. It doesn't mean everything. That there are plenty of environments where the market continue to advance, especially early in a rate hike cycle. However, we have to acknowledge the fact uh, that this is coming most likely uh, at our doorstep in 2022, something that we talk about a lot uh, and have certainly spent a lot of our time, as you're full aware if you've listened to these previous market carvers, has our attention. So last we go to the S&P 500 trend. As long as it's in an uptrend, uh, that gives us the technical leg of our risk barometer and at least keeps us on the field and playing in some degree, no matter what the Federal Reserve uh, is doing. So I want to unpack, there's a lot of different lines on this chart, and let's just kind of start from the top and work our way down. Uh, the first thing you see is a, is a flat blue line. We call that resistance. And you can see the bars on the S&P 500 mark the daily uh, price action of the S&P 500. Uh, and that blue line marks where it has stalled. It has tried to get up to 4,700 uh, and well above it. And each time it has, it has stalled and reversed back down. All right, so that is the first thing we want to look for is we want to see that get back up above the blue line. And that would tell us there are fresh new buyers and the potential for fresh new legs of this market uptrend to resume. Uh, where you look at the S&P 500 now, as we're printing this, is right around 4,600. That lines up with that red line that moves throughout time. That is the 50-day moving average. And so far, that is acting as a level of support for the market. So as the prices come down a little bit, uh, they are bouncing back off of that into the upside. So that is a good thing, and that is a battle that we see uh, that we are watching. We don't know which one's going to win. Uh, but if it begins to lose those levels of support lines, the next one would be that blue dash line, which would mark the highs of the market back in, in August and acted as a temporary medium level of support uh, in November. So we're looking at a merely microscope, really short term trend of the market. But that's important for us for timing when we're looking at buying or selling and adjusting position sizes. We really want to be microscopic. If we lose, the, lose those, we're really looking at that last uh, bottom blue line that would be the last or next level of support, which would be around 4,200. Uh, so quite the potential here that we go back down and test that. We don't know. Ultimately, the best case scenario, we find some fresh legs. We get this traditional Santa Claus rally, which happens in the later part of September into the first part of January, and we clear those. But we will wait and see and certainly be ready to react. The bottom panel there uh, is, is what we call the momentum line, and we see that blue line working its way uh, in a downtrend, and that is not a good sign. That tells us that each time the S&P 500 is trying to break out, trying to make a new high, it is doing so with, le with less oomph. Uh, and that's that's not a good thing. So not a longer term point, but as we begin to manage uh, entry points and exit points, this is something that gets our attention a lot and how we'll be watching it uh, shake out in the next few weeks. Hey, thanks again for giving us a few minutes of your time. Don't forget you can schedule your complimentary meeting, Sch uh, scan this QR code or give us a call at 800-928-4001. And as always, don't forget you have a chance to listen to our radio show either over the airwaves or however you get your podcasts. Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful weekend.